The Big East men's college basketball tournament is happening right now in New York City. And if the games so far are any indication, the Big East could be well represented in next week's NCAA tournament. Taking time from her very busy schedule to join us now is Val Ackerman, commissioner of the Big East Conference. Welcome, Val. Thank it's you, Tony. so nice, nice to, to be have here. you. Thank you. You are a longtime sports executive overseeing both men's and women's sports programs at all levels. Is there a big difference between men's and women's sports programs, managing them? There are, the athletes are very much motivated by the same sorts of things. The administration tends to be a bit different. Um, women's sports, I think, have further to go in terms of visibility, but uh, both are very exciting um, parts of American life, really, and it's been an honor for me to be involved in so many different levels. So in terms of the Big East, are there plans to expand the conference? Not at the moment. We no. have 10 teams. It's a very tight-knit group. Um, we have a great basketball um, heritage, and it, this sort of configuration we have now is keeping all of that going. It's not to say we wouldn't expand somewhere down the line, but it's not a front-burner topic. And what is your take on schools switching conferences? How do you feel about that? Well, that's how this conference came into being. Mm -hmm. um, many of the schools that this group had been associated with before 2013 had themselves pulled out of the old Big East to go to other places. My group of schools pulled out to form a new conference and joined others who came in turn from other conferences. So it's been a bit of a, uh, of a you know, musical chairs, I suppose. But it's part of college sports. I think for now, though, things are settling down. I don't anticipate any big changes in the foreseeable future. Now, how important is it for a Big East school to get into the NCAA conference? Into the tournament, very important. Very we have very competitive men's basketball. The tournament tonight will feature four of our top programs. All of them we expect to be in March Madness. Right. When that starts next weekend. Um, and our hope is that they'll not only get in, but they'll progress. And, and, and a couple of them, I think, have a clear shot to uh, get a national championship. Wow. Hopefully. Do that's, you have a na national that's championship run? Absolutely. Great. Amazing. Do you have a specific number with how many you hope to get in? Or? Well, I, you know, I would hope it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of five. Mm -hmm. Last year it was six. The year before that it was mm -hmm. four. But we have a smaller number of schools than many conferences. So the idea that we could have roughly half of our schools playing or more in any given year is a, is a pretty big deal. And what are your feelings about Villanova's chances right now? I think they're fantastic. They have a great coach in Jay Wright. They have senior leadership. They were in the tournament last year and the year before. So they're sort of tested. Uh, Xavier, uh, which is one of our newer schools, uh, has an amazing men's basketball program. Great coach there as well. Again, senior leadership, which counts for a lot right. when you get into these very tough situations. So those two in particular, but it's going to be a great tournament, very wide open this year in men's college basketball. So we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Absolutely. And, and switching gears just for a moment, what are your feelings about the challenges that female athletes in particular still face. So what changes would you like to see happen, for instance, in, in women's basketball? I, I think the challenges today are really marketplace challenges. When I uh, was a student athlete many years ago, I had a chance to play sports when Title IX had been sort of just passed, and it was amazing. And women's sports have grown considerably since that time, 40 years ago. And now the, the challenges really, I think, are at the elite level. The pro sports who are trying to solidify their niches, trying to get more fans to come, trying to get more more money into their programs so that they in turn can pay their athletes. Right. That really is the work that that remains. But um, it, it's it's glass half full. It's right. It's been a lot of great change. What are your feelings though about sometimes uh, female athletes complain that especially with social media and the rest of it, they're targeted differently than male athletes. And in some ways, the their appearance seems to be more important than it is for male athletes. I think that sometimes probably you know subconsciously mm -hmm. does tend to happen. Um, you know, we would all hope that performance is really the metric on which all of us, you know, are judged ultimately. But sometimes that isn't always the case. Uh, but the good news is I do think culture is changing and, and, and performance really is becoming more and more the reason why uh, deservedly, women's right. athletes are getting their due. That's fantastic. And what about on the executive level? Here you are, which is fantastic. Do you feel that the sports world in general is becoming more open to very high-level female executives? Since I started in the business now almost 30 years ago, absolutely. Um, there are more women now working in executive positions. We still have work to do to get to the highest ranks of sports leagues and networks and uh, international sports organizations. There's quite a way to go. But it's, uh, but it's all good. And I think as more women get into the system, as they play sports, Sports. There's a correlation between the women who play and the ones who then go on to work in the business. Right. I think good things can happen. It'll just keep getting better. I, do, I think that's right. Val Ackerman, thank you so much, and best of luck in the thank conference. You. Great, thanks.